Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be having a look at the McFarlane Toys Legend Darkness figure. Just before we have a closer look at the figure and the accessories that come included with Darkness, let's get some measurements going. If you technically count the top of his horns, now the horns usually are forward on Darkness, not up. The figure is about eight and a quarter of an inch tall. All right, fun fact about Darkness here is I've never reviewed this figure, or at least I don't think I did. I think I initially started a review many years ago on this guy, and maybe the video got scrapped, or I don't, I don't really know the reasoning for it. But I was kind of going through my collection one day, and I found this guy. And I thought, okay, well, it is really popular right now, It the movie. And of course, Tim Curry, who also played Legends Darkness here, was also Pennywise the Clown in the original It. So I thought it was perfect time to have a look at another very memorable role here for Tim Curry and have a look at the McFarlane Toys Darkness. So his accessories, and I'm going to warn you in advance that this figure is probably going to fall at some point, but... Maybe, maybe he won't, I don't know. For starters, he comes with a Movie Maniacs display stand, which is more the newer display stands, or near the later run of the display stands, where it forfeited the outer border of skulls in favor of something just much more smaller and condensed. So we've got the Movie Maniacs logo down below here amongst a just a series of skulls and skeletal remains. You can see where the stand, well, you can see how it stands, but you can also see how it holds the poster into the top there. And the poster actually, it just sits inside that groove. It doesn't, it doesn't really do the greatest of jobs. Here's a poster for Legend. I, I don't believe that's the original poster for Legend, but uh, again, very, very cool movie. That just slots into the top here. And uh, that, that's that's what you get for your poster. There's not really, again, much to be said for it. I would wish that it could have still been the taller sized versions of the posters. But that's basically what we get with Darkness. If you have, I haven't also had a chance to watch Darkness. I really feel like Darkness, or Legend, I should say, who Darkness appears in, Legend is a very undervalued movie. I think it, it gets really overlooked a lot of times for more other fantasy-themed movies. But Darkness has, or Legend has, with Darkness, one of the most memorable movie characters, movie villains, if you ask me, of all time. Absolutely love Darkness. Some have also uh, coined him the Lord of Darkness, but I think he actually just goes by Darkness here. Before we have a look at the figure, he does come with a couple of accessories, one of which being his sword, which has a great looking hammered out gunmetal uh just look to it, which really actually is decent. Very, very nice. Paint is very minimal. I mean, really only relying on the gunmetal to get the point across, no pun intended. But it does really resonate a lot of those little smashed out details, like the sword itself would have been hand forged. The hilt also has some nice decorative work to it. Simplistic in its design, but still, I think, executes quite well. And he also comes with the unicorn horn. I will try my best not to spoil anything about Legend, so if you have not seen it, do yourselves a, please do yourselves a favor and go check that movie out. But one of the unicorn horns comes in also included with Darkness. And you can display it into his hands. Either hand, really, to, to that matter. You can put the unicorn horn in that hand, for example, and you can put the sword in this hand, or vice versa. One thing to note about the sword, though, is you want to take the bottom part of the hilt off because without that it won't have the means to properly slide into his hand and you just want to wiggle this through I actually do feel like now that I kind of correct myself here this hand more suited for the actual unicorn horn and this hand here for holding the sword and again looks just fantastic and we go ahead and just replace the bottom of the hilt and you've got the sword in the, in the place. Now, unfortunately, as you could probably guess it, because this is a McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs figure, articulation normally would be limited. This is actually a little bit of an interesting one because he does have a little bit more articulation than one would probably suspect. But unfortunately, though what, limit, what articulation he does seem, uh, seems to have, uh, it is limited by the way, well, we'll talk about that right now. Let's go ahead and take the sword out of his hand. And just replace this, because I know I'm going to lose it. Slot that to the bottom. We'll put that to the side. Actually, you know what? Maybe we won't talk articulation. Let's first talk face sculpt. 
An older figure, yes, but still a 100% fantastic likeness of Tim Curry as Darkness. Uh, a very, very unique design as well. And to think that this was all prosthetics. This is something nowadays would have been done in, guaranteed in CG. But back in the day, this was fully, fully applianced onto Tim Curry, the actor. Like all of this prosthetic, this is fantastic. The figure does, I think, a pretty good job of replicating what he looks like in the movie. But of course, what is missing is just the overall presence of this towering monster uh, that wants to destroy the land. Again, face sculpt is pretty good on him. Uh, about the only thing I would say is a correction to what I would have done differently to the figures. I would have made the red a little bit more vibrant. Over the course of time, and I think the figure even has gotten a little dusty in my collection. But it's not nearly as red vibrant as it really should be. Again, the horns are a nice touch. They've incorporated the blue wash to it. I don't really think it's necessary myself, but they've opted to put that. They could have just given that a, a black treatment and called it a day. Oh, he has so many cool elements to him in the movie. And his presence, it's, it is one of my favorite movie villains of all time. Now his outfit, or I guess his body, top half is red, like a dark devil red, like just not as vibrant. I would say like the figure doesn't do as good of a job of transitioning and carrying that vibrancy from the movie into plastic form. The lower half though, is that of uh, like a goat or like a, not, I guess a centaur where you've got like the hooves of, of a goat there. He does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Unfortunately, I don't have the necessarily, uh, I don't have a display stand that accommodates these holes. These holes are a little bit too big. In fact, the, the stand I normally use for, uh, for reviewing, uh, the, the pegs aren't large enough. So he sits on it, but they don't really hold the figure. And unfortunately, this is the one place where I don't think he really needed articulation. He's got a hinge right where the I guess where the hooves uh, are uh, at the bottom of his leg, obviously, that's where the hinge is. And unfortunately, that's the one place where you wouldn't want to hinge because what ultimately ends up happening is you put the figure down and he buckles with his own weight. He's very top heavy, but also just the, the, the size of him, uh, the, the hooves are too small and the peg point should not have been there that he just ends up uh, kind of collapsing on his own weight. He's got some really great looking sculpt here on the lower torso where you can see there's ropes and there's his belt, just rags and just different, different uh, sculpts there of like the fabric that's just been draped around the lower half of him. And then he's got a one giant looking cape, which has kind of this faux texture, like the faux fur around the top here. The cape is done nicely. Uh, it is a softer plastic, so you got a little bit of playability going here. The The downside, though, to the cape is it does actually limit his posability. And uh, we'll just kind of go through that quickly now. Uh, he does have more posability than one would, one would think. His head does rotate all the way around. doesn't have a ball joint, though, so it really that's, that's about all you can really get out of it. The horns can also rotate up, although most... Most, if not most, if not all the times in the movie, his horns are actually out. But you can have them a little angled down if you so wish. Um, but again, his head rotates, his waist rotates, and then his arms. If I kind of just move this all out of the way here, his arms are on a hinge. You could technically bring the arm all the way down, but because this is here as well as he's got rubber on the underside of his arm, it really limits his arms from being able to be posed down. They want to stick them straight out. He could have easily just had his arms sculpted outward anyways for what little limitation or what limitation you do get to his limited articulation. This is not not something you normally would see with a Movie Maniacs figure. You normally would not have articulation where the arms can hinge outward. I like that Darkness has it, but you can't really do much with it because the whole time the, the cape and the fur and the rags around it prevent the arms from actually staying downward. Now, the trade-off, unfortunately, is while he does have new articulation that you would not expect on a movie Maniacs, he still has absolutely nothing in the forearms. You can't rotate the arms. 
Um, you can rotate the hands, but you can't rotate the arms. The hands are hingeable, so they do hinge outward, as well as they can be rotated all the way around. Kind of wish they had elbow articulation, but I really know that that's not McFarlane's style. Now the legs, on the other hand, look at the legs. The legs can split outward, which is so strange to see a Marvel Legends or a Movie Maniacs figure be able to do that. Movie Maniac figures also are very are very prone to having limited posability, but as you can see with Darkness, he has a sufficient amount when it comes to his legs. Uh, would you ever think that you'd be able to see this with a Movie Maniac figure? I certainly wouldn't, and yet Darkness seems to have that. Doesn't have a bend at the knee. Uh, the legs are pretty much pre-posed, and then you've got the articulation in the lower leg. Now, right here, it basically rotates, I guess, where the ankle would be, and then you've got the hinge here in the hoof. But again, like, doesn't really need to have articulation here. That I mean, that seems unnecessary, if anything. Why have rotation going on there? Would you ever feel the need to rotate his legs? I guess you could rotate his feet outward, but it does look awkward in the process of it. And then, of course, he's got the hinge in the foot. So, he's got a good bit of articulation in the, in the arms and in the legs, but then he's got unnecessary articulation here. If they just removed this and had put articulation in the knees, that would have been also really quite good, too. Because, ultimately, as you can probably see here, too, if I get him to stand, he wants to topple over, which is really a shame. Uh, what's also a really shame, too, is that this is one of the few darkness figures that we've gotten. I would love to see NECA uh, produce a legend, I mean, maybe for an anniversary or something of legend, of legend maybe uh, darkness could be brought back in a figure form from maybe the likes of uh, NECA producing an a fully articulated uh, darkness, you know, with the ab crunch and the articulation in the elbows. I would absolutely love to see that. Uh, again, it's a good. It's a good-looking figure. I'm surprised I just never reviewed him, but uh, the only thing I would say is he really is long overdue for for a re-release from a different company. The McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Legend Darkness is still a figure I think that holds up well today. The sculpt I think still resonates as a figure that could stand amongst your other collection, and it doesn't look dated at all. But the only thing I would still say is dated about this figure is while he does have posability in his legs and his arms, he doesn't have some of the articulation that one would come to find with newer released figures. This is a figure, and I say this with such passion, this is a figure that deserves a re-release. And I don't really say re-release because it would be from a different toy company, but this is a character that so deserves another outing, maybe from the folks over at NECA. Just think what NECA could have done with a darkness figure, giving us some much needed articulation, and I think a vibrancy to the figure here that this particular figure unfortunately doesn't seem to have. He does have the very bright reds, but he doesn't have nearly the vibrant red that he has in the movie that I think NECA really could deliver if they ever approach this line. NECA is, however, going to be doing some IT figures, which are going to be uh, coming out, I guess, at the end of the year or so. You never know, maybe they might say, let's go back and and do like a darkness figure from Legend, maybe celebrating some upcoming anniversary or something for the movie itself. As a side note though, if you haven't had a chance to ever watch Legend, stars uh, Tom Cruise also in there as well, uh, do yourself a favor, do watch it. It's a fantastic movie. If you're a fan of like movies like Willow and other fantasy movies, Legend would definitely be right up your alley. This is, in my honest opinion, this is Tim Curry's best role. Some would say Pennywise, of course, he was also in Rocky Horror Picture Show, but my all-time favorite Tim Curry uh, role will always forever be Darkness from the movie Legend. Today, once again, we we're having a look at the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs. This was the Legend's Darkness. If you guys like this video and certainly want to see more videos like this, hit this video with a like. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to this channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below and you won't miss a beat when it comes to future videos. And now as always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.